Hello, everybody. This is Jackson No with No Finance, bringing you the most up-to-date news about small business financing. I hope you all had a happy Halloween. Today is November 1st, and I can't believe it's already November. It's crazy. We're, we're, you know, once it hits the holidays, it feels like the year's pretty much done once you hit Thanksgiving. You know, there's still plenty of time left, but you get into that mode of seeing family and friends and that sort of thing. So it seems like time just really takes off at that point. But I hope you all had a, a happy Halloween, maybe did some trick or treat with the family or, uh, you know, had a, had a party with some friends or something, but, but yeah, November 1st, crazy. So I just have a, some, a few different points I want to hit on today. It's Friday. To be honest, I didn't put a lot together today. I'm, I'm already ready for the weekend, uh, but I do have a few good points that I wanted to go over before we hit the weekend here. So. First one is uh, we've seen more funds come in for the, the businesses that have been affected by Hurricane Helene and Hurricane Milton. We've actually seen, and this is, we're still waiting on the SBA funds to come in. They have started accepting applications, but they haven't actually sent out any money yet from what I've heard for the economic injury disaster loans. Uh, but we did hear that Amex partnered with the Chamber of Commerce a Foundation to team up on grants for small businesses, again, that were affected by these hurricanes. They have a total of a $5 million pool and they have a, they'll be able to give a thousand different small businesses a $5,000 grant. So better than nothing pays at least for, you know, maybe one or two months of rent or some operating expenses for one month. Uh, so it's better than nothing, right? Amex didn't need to do that. So it's good that these bigger corporations are stepping in and giving money to the businesses that are in need. Um, second point I want to go over is the NFIB, that's the National Federation of Independent Businesses. I've started to look at their website every day for updates because they just have really great articles and studies that they do. And they they go to Congress and they, they'll they act on behalf of small businesses nationwide. So I really like, you know, what that organization is about. But they, uh, they said that small business employment remains stable based on their October numbers. 53% of small businesses, of uh, small business owners reported hiring or trying to hire in October. So that's more than half. So that's good. And they're still looking to hire. And then uh, the job openings were highest in construction, transportation, and wholesale sectors. It was the lowest in agriculture and finance. And some of the problems that we continue seeing with small business owners is the labor costs are still high and they're trying to find quality skilled labor. And those are remain as the two biggest challenges for small business owners right now on top of inflation. I mean, the third point I want to go over is InvestBev commits $50 million to fuel growth in the distillery and bourbon barrel sector. You know, selfishly, I'm from Kentucky. So when I saw this headline, I had to talk about it. InvestBev, though, they don't just, they don't just invest into bourbon companies or distilleries. They do everything across the, across the board when it comes to be beverages. They have uh, raised over $100 million since they opened in 2015. And I'm sorry, they've raised over $200 million and they have a $100 million credit a platform. They also do uh, provide insurance as well. But I just thought this, this story was really interesting because just being in Kentucky, you always hear new distilleries coming up. But part of the problem is it's really hard for some banks or bigger lending groups to uh, finance the inventory with bourbon because it's all stored in barrels. And with bourbon, you have to age it. I should know this better. It's, it, I think it's at least two years, but most bourbon distilleries do four years or more or longer because uh, you can get those bottles that are, you know, 15, 20 years old. Sometimes they're a lot more rare, but anyway, so you have an inventory that is just sitting in, you know, it's sitting uh, in these barns or warehouses, wherever they keep them. Typically it's like a oversized barn, right? But yeah, I mean, they're keeping them there for four years. So it's really hard for banks to to be able to account for this because most of the time you're getting rid of your inventory in, you know, 90 days, maybe six months at the most so you, with most companies. So uh, even with banks in Kentucky, whether it's like an issue that there's not enough money in the banks in Kentucky or, you know, for whatever reason, they're not feeling as strong about the bourbon market as InvestBev does, but this is what they do. They focus in this sector. And I think it's great that they're not only uh, providing capital from a private equity standpoint, you know, not just for the inventory of the bourbon, but also for the bourbon barrel distributors as well. And so anyone that's like putting the barrels together too, he's focusing on that as well. So just for, again, selfishly, I thought this uh, story was really interesting. So if you're in the beverage uh, industry, 
I'll look into invest bev, even if you're not into bourbon, if you do any type of other spirits or beer or wine, I would check them out as far as a credit partner. And, and then the last story I want to go over before the end of the weekend is E Capital, which is an asset based lender. Uh, they received $330 million from heirs management credit to provide more funding for their prospective and current clients. E Capital offers factoring, asset based lending, line of credit, and equipment refinancing ranging from $500,000 all the way up to $50 million. So again, yeah, thank you all uh, for stopping in today. We've gone over a lot this week. I'll do a recap over the weekend, you know, again, just to see what everything that we went over uh, this past week, take everything together and, you know, just kind of make a, a synopsis of how the business owners are feeling nationwide, how the lenders are feeling, some of the big storylines so we can, you know, put all that together and put a nice bow on uh, on the week. And then we'll get ready for next week. So I hope you all have a great weekend and I appreciate all the time. Thanks.